Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Hunter, The Sales Hunter, and you've joined me again for another webinar where we're going to be talking about turning a prospect into a customer. And we're going to be starting here in about 30 seconds. Let me give you a little tease question to think about. What did you learn from the last five prospects you talked to? Think about this for a moment. What did you learn? What did you learn? My whole goal whenever I'm prospecting is to always be learning from everybody I speak to. And I ask myself, after I've made a series of prospecting calls, what did I learn? Not, not just how, how is it going to help me with that particular prospect, but what did that teach me about prospecting in general? What did that teach me about other things? What did that teach me about the industry? So think about that for just a moment, and we're going to get started here in about 20 seconds. Hey, let's get going here. My name is Mark Hunter and I've got the cup of coffee and oh, man, it's already a third gone, but hey, we'll just have to make it work. And, and this is another webinar, video streaming webinar, where we're talking about how do we turn a prospect into a customer. And just like we have for this entire year, it's brought to us by the folks at InfoFree, truly one of the best products you can ever possibly find to really get you the leads that you need and, and the ability to segment. I, I, I work with this product a lot and, it, and the ability to segment is absolutely unbelievable. So I very highly recommend InfoFree. Now, all the content I share, all the strategies come from my book, High Profit Prospecting, and from a lot of these clients I've had the chance to work with over the years. And believe me, this is, this is, a, this is an outdated list. I, I, I could fill five, six screens. But really, what are we talking about here today? How do we turn the prospect into a customer? Now, this really should be about a 10, 12 hour webinar, because I'll tell you what, there is so much content that we need to share. Now, what I'm going to do here is, is I, I want us to get to the point where we've now got the prospect. What do we mean by got the prospect? Well, this slide, I love this slide. You can't turn a Walmart shopper into a Nordstrom customer. You just, you just can't. Now, there's nothing wrong with either Walmart or Nordstrom, but they have different types of customers. You see, in our prospecting process, we have to be qualifying. And what I'm assuming is that we're at that point where we've now ascertained that, that you are a potential prospect to me. In other words, you've given me, you've demonstrated to me a need, You've demonstrated to me a timeline as to when you're going to make a decision. I understand a little bit about your value of money, the Walmart Nordstrom. And I know who else might be involved. Now, let's just think about those for just a moment, okay? Just in case we got to recap those, okay? Okay, you've demonstrated to me a need, okay? Now, you've shared with me then a piece of proprietary private information, you see? So that means there's a level of confidence. You've told me about your timeline for making a decision. So I know that you're going to make a, a, a decision within the timeline that fits for what I need. I understand your value of money. In other words, I, I know if you're looking for a Ferrari, you don't have a Volkswagen budget. Okay. You, you truly have a Ferrari budget. And I, we know who else might be involved. It's just you making the decision. Is it somebody else making the decision? So, so we're kind of at that point point. But the problem is I can get a lot of customers, a lot of prospects to that point, but how do I get them to become a customer? And to say that a salesperson doesn't have this problem would be absolutely a bold-faced lie because every customer has that problem. And we're going to talk for about 30, 35 minutes on just this very subject. Because one of the keys that we have, uh, one of the problems we have is because of the internet, the wealth of information out there, it is very easy for our prospects to go dark on us. They can go dark on us. I've got, in my own business, prospects like that. I can be very much engaged with them. It looks like we're going to close, and all of a sudden, they just go dark. Why? Because they know how to get in touch with us. You see, they know how to get in touch with us. Um, so there's no reason for them to really reach out until they're ready to make a decision. But the problem is there's more information I want to glean from them. There's more information I want to learn from them because I can help them make a decision faster. 
Now, here's a very critical, this, this, this next slide is going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind, A, because it's so simple, and yet it's so complex. Where are you in the sales process? Engaging or closing? Big difference here. There is a much bigger difference here than almost anybody wants to admit. And this is what's funny. I, I uh, speak to a lot of my peers, a lot of my fellow peers who are sales uh, speakers and trainers, consultants, and so forth. And, and this is a topic that never comes up. It's a topic that never comes up because I don't think too many people are really aware of it. I think they're almost oblivious to it because it's, you know, we've been taught always be closing, always be closing. No, no. Whoa, what did I just say? No. Because turning a prospect into a customer, here's one of the challenges. Because of the internet, because of the tools that are out there, communication does not always occur face-to-face. -face. Communication does not always occur with me on the phone with you, okay? I mean, there, there, there are so many ways with which we communicate. And, and the problem is a lot of that communication is, is one-way communication. It's, it's me communicating to you, but when you read it, when you hear it, when you see it, I'm not on the other end, you see. So it's it's disconnected communication. Now, here's where we're getting into this problem. What happens is we have communication that will engage and we have communication that will close. What's the big difference? Okay. Communication designed to engage is to get you thinking and to ask more questions. Information and so forth designed to close is to get you to make a decision. But the problem is too many salespeople in their spirit, in their desire to try to engage you, wind up giving you enough information that you can make a decision without me. Let me give you a very real example right now going on in my business. I had a lead that developed about a month ago. We had three or four conversations on the telephone. Went very well. It came to the point that I was able to send over to him a proposal, a plan. Great follow-up phone call. But they're kind of working through some issues as a company. I'm talking with the VP of marketing. And it's he is the decision maker, no doubt about it, but there's other people at the table so a little bit of this, this, this problem. Now, 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 here's the deal. I send over the contract, but there's not quite enough information to make the decision, okay? Because, the, the, and what I send over was not the contract, but kind of the proposal, but because we really got to have a dialogue and we haven't been able to have that dialogue. Well, they're a company located in the Bay Area. So I'm going to the Bay Area next week. One reason is to meet with this company. Now, here's the whole deal. I can go out there and I'm going to attempt to close the deal while I'm on site. But the risk I run into, and think about this, this happens all the time with you. You may, it may not be a face-to-face -face meeting, but it might be a phone call that you have scheduled. Okay, So you have a phone call scheduled with somebody. And the problem is uh, that the person gets busy. So they wind up canceling. They wind up canceling. Now, wait a minute, I'm going from Omaha to San Francisco. And one of the reasons is I'm, I'm, I'm going to be meet, meeting with a couple of companies, but I'm meeting with this one company. It's a key critical reason for me making the trip. There's some cost involved, time involved, a lot of time, a lot of cost. So now here's the whole deal. If, if, if I, and, 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 and I haven't been able to close them on the phone because I've got to get the other parties in the room. See, I mean, the VP of marketing is the decision maker, but not quite. So here's the whole situation. Do I run the risk of accelerating the process by providing them too much information? Uh, I don't think we need to meet. We're going to table this decision for six months. Or do I go, no, we need to make the decision. And we need to make the decision because of the information I'm supplying that company along the way. See, what I'm doing is I'm supplying them with information that's getting them thinking, asking them questions. 
My whole objective in engaging the process is to get you thinking, to get you asking questions. Now, how do we wind up with this mess? How do we wind up with this? Well, we wind up with this mess because we've got this 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 sewer line. I, you you've seen this slide before. I've I've shared this. I've shared this in some other pre. I, I love this slide. The typical pipeline is the one over there in the red. That's the typical pipeline. And we got to get to is the blue. But see, the problem is, is not only not only do we have the process in red in our pipeline, but the process is in red in a messed up sewer line in the eyes of the customer. Now, why do you say that? It's because what we're doing is we're not respecting their time. When I engage the customer, what am I doing? I have to engage the customer by providing them insights that are getting them thinking and increasing the need for them to speak with me. Now, here's the problem. It's hard for me to have the time to do that when I've got a sewer pipe for a pipeline because I got too many, too many customers in there. So what I wind up doing is I wind up just shoveling out crap. Yeah, that's what I wind up doing. I just wind up shoveling out crap to customers to, to try to stay engaged. Oh, let me send them this newsletter. Oh, let me send them this. Let me send them that. No, it's, it's got to be meaningful and a good use of my time and a good use of their time. Now, I can only do that when I've got a very narrow funnel. You see, this is, this is why I continue to sit there and say, I got to have a narrow funnel. This is why when we talk about moving prospect to customer, I've got to do a better job of qualifying you up front because I only want people moving into my pipeline who I have a good high probability of being able to close. Now, does that mean they've told me they want to buy? No, 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 uh, no, probably not. But I know that I have a high ability to deliver to them success. I've got some other clients, other prospects I'm, I'm really trying to work with right now because I know I can help them. I know I can help them. And there's a few of them that have very much disengaged with me. What am I going to do? I've got to double down on my time with them. But I'm willing to double down on my time with them because I know the outcome that I can provide. So how do I go about that? Well, one of the ways I do it is what I call micro commitments. This is a very key critical. Now, micro commitments are different than the close, okay? The close is where I'm, try I'm trying to get the deal. I'm trying to get the whole sale. The micro commitments is just the approval to go to the next step or response to a question, response to feedback. It's, it's something along the way. Now, here's the other problem. What happens is we get micro commitments, but we get caught up in our underwear. So what happens is we get micro commitments and, and, and it winds up clouding, fuzzy, hazy, what we're thinking about the customer. I, I will have this happen. I'll be talking to a customer and I, I think this is, this is the solution I can provide them. In fact, it's funny, I, I was just with a sales team last week and this very thing came up. Salesperson came up to me, they had a great phone, great phone call, great phone call. This is so spot on with how they're going to close. So spot on. But then subsequently in a follow-up phone call, in, in, in a follow-up micro commitment where they asked them to review some documents and I'll get into that in just a bit. They came back with some more ideas. And what happened was suddenly the salesperson, they, well, gee, I can do this, this, and this, and this. And I, Hold it, slow down. Huh. The one thing is the one thing. Make it simple. Make it simple. We wind up, because our customers have more ability to make more decisions today than ever before, the number one decision that we tend to face is no decision. There is no decision. I, I run into this all the time. I, I get approached all the time by salespeople. And, and I see this when I'm working with companies. Again, I, I was with a sales team back here a couple weeks ago. And I was amazed at, at 
the cust the, they had a really good process of getting leads that turned into prospects. But then what happened was they, they literally threw at them the kitchen sink. And in throwing them the kitchen sink, what happened was the customer had a hard time making the, making the decision. It became the sewer pipe. You see, what I want to do is I want to take my micro commitments and bring them down to just one thing. Now, how do I go about creating micro commitments? Because the best micro commitments are many times done when you're not when you're not there. Yeah. In other words, what I'm doing is I'm using email and I'm using voicemail. Now, this is this is again the power play that I want you to keep in mind and go back to that original question I talked about engaging versus closing. Okay. I had this situation come up just the other day. It's an industry I do quite a bit of work in. And I noticed that there is a disruptor that is coming into their industry, disruptor. So what I did was I took the article I found online, how I was alerted to it. I mean, this is truly disruption in the biggest sense. And I forwarded that link to a couple of the prospects and customers that I don't really do much business with in that industry with this statement. How do you see yourselves responding to this? Now, what was I doing? I was asking for a micro commitment because what I was doing was I was asking them to read, to, to check the link and to respond. Now, if you follow me, you'll know that, wait a minute, Mark, when you're prospecting, you don't send out links. You're right. But see, this is after I've established that, okay? So they're now in my sales funnel, see? So I can, I'm going to send them a link because I know it's getting through to them. They're probably going to have a probability of being willing to open it, and they're going to read it. But what was I doing? I was asking for a micro-commitment because what I was asking them was I was asking them to do really three things. One, open the link, read the article. Two, develop a, a thought based on the article. And three, email me back with that thought. Of the four people I sent that to, three responded to me. Three responded. What did I do? I created micro commitments. And what did I do? That now allowed me to come back and talk with them again. You see, this ability to engage, see, I'm, I'm not closing. See, I'm not closing. I, I was not trying to close. I'm trying to engage. Big, big difference. See, big difference. I would never try to give them enough information to close unless I was literally going to be in their office or on the phone with them or on a video, you know, somehow immediate, immediate connection that we can both communicate. See, engaging versus closing. See. This is where I say be very careful about how you message and when you message. Now, I, I want, want to continue, uh, continue on this line. Let's really think about it. what are the questions to accelerate your prospecting. Because what I'm doing here, now think about this. The link I sent out was followed by a question. You see, I have found if I send you a link, if I send you a piece of information and don't create a call to action, why did I send you the link? Why did I send you the link? There was no reason for me to send you the link. I want to send you that link. Now, can I do this by way of voicemail? Yes, it's a little bit harder, but I might be able to say, hey, if, if, if they happen to be, hey, Houston Chronicle, because I know they read the Houston Chronicle or the LA Times or, or something like that. Hey, check the front page or something like that. I, I can do that. And for instance, in the financial community, in the, you know, where I know most of those people physically read the Wall Street Journal, I love doing that. Hey, look at the article on page B1. Look at the article on page B3. And I'll say that in a voicemail. Let me know what you think of it. Now, this is what's interesting. See, what I'm doing is I'm sending you this micro commitment, okay? So again, I, I said, hey, hey, look at page B3, Wall Street Journal. 
of today's journal. You know, you never call it the Wall Street Journal, you call it the journal, you know. And and let me know what you think. Give me a buzz back. Now, will they call me back? Probably not, because again, this is I'm leaving them a voicemail, and that's a harder way, harder way to respond. But what have I done? I've opened up the ability for me to follow up with them as to whether or not they read that article. Now you say, Mark, hold on. One time you mentioned never repeat the same message. Okay, but I'm not repeating the same message. One time I sent you the link. Now I'm sending you a message to respond on on a link. You see, you see what I'm doing? So what am I doing? I'm creating a micro commitment. Now, now I could not leave you a voicemail on this message. Okay. Look at page B3, look at this article and give me a call back as to what you think. I can't go and leave them a voicemail as to say, hey, did you read the article and and I want you to call me back? No, look, you are you already left that. But what you can do is you can say, hey, I've talked to some other people regarding the impact of that article. Love to share it with you. I built on it. I built, I, I'm never going to leave that same message twice, but I'm going to build on it. Now, what, what am I doing? I'm still engaging. I'm engaging. I'm engaging. Now, what am I doing? I'm working to create more value. This is the whole piece of what I'm trying. I'm trying to create as much value as possible. Now, wait a minute. Am I creating value in the product I'm selling or am I creating value in me? I'm creating value in me. This is the number one piece that you need to be doing is create value in what you send out in you. You see, it, it, very interesting. And, and, and I just made a comment on an article on LinkedIn this morning about this. And that was, hey, it's not so much what you sell, even how you sell, it's why you sell. It's the outcome you're, you're trying to create for the people. Now, that brings up the next interesting piece. Can I be asking these questions by way of social media? Yes, I can. I can ask these questions in LinkedIn messages. I can be asking these questions. I engage with prospects, okay? So I've got, I've, I've got prospects. In fact, it's kind of funny, but I've got several prospects in my own business who I've talked to on the phone and we, eh, they're just not a hot, they're not a high value prospect to me, okay? They're not a high value prospect, okay? Okay, it's fine. But every now and then I see them commenting on something on LinkedIn. So guess what? I jump in the fray. I jump in the conversation and I'll ask them a question. Now, what am I doing? I'm engaging them. There's, I don't want them to lose sight of me completely, but I'm engaging them at a very low level. If they respond, if they bounce back and come back, then, then I'm going to appropriately dial up or dial down. But what am I doing here? I'm not spending valuable cycles on a lower value prospect. Now, wait a minute. Why were they lower value? Because the total outcome, the total benefit I could help just isn't that significant. You know, it's just not going to be significant enough for them and not significant enough for me. Oh, wait, a minute. hold on. What did you just say, Mark? For you. So you are putting yourself first. Well, yeah, I do. Because there are customers that you're going to run into from a prospecting standpoint that need you, that want you, but you don't want a service. Because they just don't deliver enough value to you. In other words, what they were was they were Walmart shoppers looking for a Nordstrom solution. Sorry, it's not going to happen. But do you see how this comes back to this whole engage versus close? I'm not going to look to close anybody until I have that ability, until we've had that ability. Now, I've got a question that has popped up. It's great. It's been a few years since I've digested Sandler training and not to sp spill candy in it today. Uh, your thinking is new age and, whoa, I like this question. Let's, let's run this. Let's run this. And I got something in the way here. I apologize. Oh, come on. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. 
uh, is new age and can draw out platforms to come in. How can I track all the touch points by text, voice? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Hey, oh, I love it. Roseanne says, try using a CRM like Microsoft. Yeah. Now, Microsoft Dynamics, Salesforce, a lot of tools out there. <clears throat> you don't even have to be that com complex. I was with a salesperson the other day who runs a very significant business, literally all from an Excel spreadsheet. Now, I don't recommend this. But what this what this salesperson does is is has an Excel spreadsheet. First of all, with all this cust all his prospects in there, he's got a, several hundred prospects in there, and he just has a calendar. He just marks the next the last date as to when he contacted them. That's it. That 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 is as complex as it goes. Period. Pretty easy, huh? Yeah. But see, what that does is it just allows him. He just puts in the date and then what it was. He doesn't worry about trying to remember it. Now, again, that's a little bit simplistic. I, I'm not. I'm not recommending that because I think you got to copy that. I happen to use Evernote. Evernote for me is a terrific tool. We use Zoho in our. We have we have Salesforce, Zoho, Infusion. Well, we have multiple tools. Well, we got multiple clients. We got to got to understand what's going on out there. But I use Evernote a lot in my own business because what I'll do is I'll if, if you're a prospect. I'll use Evernote and I, and I have a separate page for just you. And, and that's where I dump in all of all my emails, all my, all my correspondence, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I just drop it in there. Now, does it do text messages and phone calls? No, I summarize those and I drop those in. But see, what am I doing? My whole objective to come back to this is I want to be asking you questions. Now, this is why I made the comment right up front. What did you learn from your last five prospects, from your last five prospecting calls? You see, because what I want to do is I want to be continuously refining this webinar. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, you know what? I would never make it in broadcasting because I'm sitting here trying to read and talk at the same time. Yes, a, a link will go out like the other, like the other webinar. So I apologize for disrupting. Anyway. So what I want to do is I want to be continuously looking to develop what are my questions? What are my questions? Because that's the way I stay engaged. Now, let, let's move to this, this piece of inbound versus outbound, because this is where engaging versus closing very much comes into play. My goal, my goal when I'm engaging you is to really get you to send me messages. In fact, if I were scoring, I would say you sending me a message is almost worth a field goal and me sending you a message is really nothing more than an extra point. Or maybe you sending me a message is a touchdown and me sending you a message is nothing more than an extra point. Or maybe it's the equivalent of a three-point play, three-point shot in basketball versus a one-point free throw. Because anytime I can get you to inbound, so where does this inbound marketing come into play? Well, this is how... I can continue to engage with you with my marketing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be following up with you with regards to that whole social media, email campaigns, and other things. Because that may be my best way for staying engaged with you. Now, you know, the, the, the second half of this inbound outbound is that inbound's got depreciating value and outbound's got appreciating value. And, 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 and I want you to do this. And this is why I'm going to tell you right now. If any of you have set up on your email system, when an email comes in and you're out of the office, sorry, I'm out of the office and I won't respond until I don't know. Get rid of it. Because I'm sorry, you shouldn't be in sales. Now, I know if we got some people from Europe who happen to be on this call, we got some European work, work laws and, and so forth. And I say, I, I'm really sorry for you having that. Because here's the deal. Whenever that person responds, I want to be able to jump on it. If I send them back a message that says I'm out of the office or I'm just attending a meeting or I'm doing this or doing that, I won't be able to respond for a day. That customer's got an, that prospect's got an itch and I didn't scratch it. They may very well go someplace else. I need to jump on this as rapidly as possible. Because 
all my outbound messages, all my outbound phone calls, I have to build value, build value, build value, build value. And that takes time. That takes a lot of time to do. Again, engaging versus closing. What I want to be doing is my messages need to be so compelling, it encourages you to respond. Now, let's take a step back and let's walk through some scenarios as to how this works, okay? I've got you as a lead. I've qualified you. I've asked you the difficult questions up front. And, oh, by the way, we'll say that you don't pass that criteria. Okay, fine. You just move over here to my marketing list. You move over here to some other list. I, I'm not going to worry about, hey, Garrett, don't worry about, sorry, sorry, sorry for the distraction. Love you. And that's really my fault for being totally distracted. But I do want to pay attention to notes over there. Don't worry about it in the least bit. You're, you're awesome. Here's the whole thing. I want to only be spending time, this is that narrow funnel, with my best. And I'm going to hit you with as many questions as possible. Now, some people say, Mark, can you become a pest? Yes, you can become a pest if the questions you're asking are not strategic oriented, strategically oriented, designed to get the person thinking. Okay, now think about this for a moment. If you have a problem and you have somebody who's asking you very insightful questions about it, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. See, if you did have that problem and this person keeps asking me these questions, then they'd be bugging me. But remember the qualification process, you see? The need, the need that, that you shared with me, that's what's determining whether or not I've got, I've got the, the authority to communicate with you. You see, what it really is all about is that I, I'm, trying to, I, I'm trying to influence each person I meet, you see. And, and each time I influence you, I'm moving you closer to the sale. Now, here's something else that this does that we haven't talked about at all. And it's very interesting, but I, I just heard this comment the other day from a Navy SEAL. Navy SEAL said, the, mind, the body isn't what breaks us, it's our mind. His whole premise was, it's amazing what the body can endure, but the mind tells us that we can't endure. You know, it becomes really a mental game. Here's what I found. When I'm sending you, you're my prospect, insightful, engaging messages, whether it be by way of email, voicemail, maybe it's a social media message, I don't care, maybe it's a text message, and you're not responding, I still feel good because I know that I'm influencing you positively because that question I'm sending you is so insightful. Let me give you an example from my own business. There's a company that I, this goes back a couple of years ago, that I really wanted to do some business with. And I knew I could help them. I really knew I could help them. And I couldn't get beyond. I mean, in other words, qualified them. They very much fit. They were having some financial struggles. It was about three years, three and a half years ago. And I knew I could help them. And I continued to engage and I could never get them to pull the trigger. But the whole time I'm thinking to myself, I know I can help them. I mean, it was almost like, it almost became a, a passion of mine to try to help this company. They never did engage with me. And about a year and a half ago, I heard they went bankrupt and went out of business. I go, ah, oh. you know what's interesting? When I heard that, and I just heard that a few months ago, because again, I wasn't following that industry all that much. And I, I didn't know it. It was a smaller company. And they'd gone out of business about a year before. This was, so this was about a, a year and a half ago. It pained me. But you know what? It gave me an incredible level of satisfaction that I tried. I tried my hardest to get them to engage with me. And for some reason, they couldn't. But you know what I was doing? I was influencing them positively. You see, so this is what's interesting. When I'm in the sales process, Engaging people. I'm giving my 
I'm giving myself more confidence. Again, this goes back to that question I started off this session with. What did you learn from the last five prospects, from your last five sales calls? You see, if I'm doing this right, everyone is taking me along the way. Now, here's what, I, here's what I'm doing. When, when I'm moving you from, from prospect to customer, I'm developing this triangle, this triangle in here, okay? And this triangle is all about a number of different needs that you're creating for me. You're, you're giving me, you're giving me all these needs. And you see, the more I engage with you, the more needs you share with me. The more needs you share with me, the more I understand because I can drill down deep because I can, I can be engaging you with each and every one. I'm, 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 I'm not closing. But now when it comes time to close, see, now when it comes time to close, I can, boom, zero in. I can zero in. And that's when I have the greatest ability to close you. But see, engaging and closing, two completely separate things. Micro commitments and closing, two separate things. And what this does is it allows me, remember that slide I had up where, where, where it says, the one thing is the one thing to keep the one thing, to keep it simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, with that, I want to allow some time, because we're 35 minutes past the hour, 36 minutes past the hour, I want to allow some time for questions, and some questions have come in. So let me pop over, over, here, over here to the screen, and um, here's a question. I, I, I love, I'm, I'm going to riddle me this. I love that. I love that type of question. I have targets. I've qualified. I've, I've left variations of voicemails some eight seconds to create curiosity, followed up with emails. I've gotten zero responses, no follow-up or callbacks, yet I sent invite and the accepted connection on LinkedIn. Okay, yes, and somebody else says, I completely, I've had the same problem. Okay, good. I'm glad you sent the LinkedIn connection. I'm glad you connected with them, okay? So now, there may not be any correlation between them accepting the LinkedIn connection and them talking to you. In other words, the, the, there are two types of LinkedIn people out there. LinkedIn people who value who they connect to and LinkedIn people who just connect with people. Okay. So again, you know, but here's what I would do. I would now sit there and connect with them and send them not a sales message by way of LinkedIn, but an inquisitive question, an engaging question by way of LinkedIn to see if they respond that way. Okay. Now, what might that be? Hey, just saw this article. You can put the link in there. Curious as to your thoughts. I love asking those types of questions because A, it allows me to see like I've done my homework. B, I care about you. And C, I value your opinion. See, I love doing it. So that would be my next approach. I use media links a lot as a way to engage people. That is probably my number one technique, my number one strategy. Second piece, in terms of you've left them voicemails and so forth. I would use the 58-2 voicemail approach. What does that mean? That's 58 minutes after the hour to two minutes into the hour, because that is the one time when busy people tend to be available because most meetings start at the top of the hour. So if I catch them right at the top of the hour, that may be the one time I can catch them. Excuse me. Another trick you can do, another trick, another strategy. Is send them an email at 6.15 or 6.20 on a Saturday morning. Okay? Again, it might be a link. It might be something. And you're asking for their opinion. Short, tight. Next piece. Try sending them an email, not the same weekend, but a different weekend. Sunday, maybe around 4.30 or 5. Okay? Next technique, and again, we're coming into the summer, so we get a lot of different calling strategies that work really good in the summer. Use holiday weeks to make phone calls. Here's why. Many times what happens is during holiday weeks, and let's use the 4th of July this year. 4th of July is on a Tuesday this year. So there's going to be a lot of companies that will have Monday off, but a lot of companies won't. And there'll be other, company, and other companies that may take Wednesday. It's going to be a completely disjointed world out there. But what it means is that there's going to be also a lot of people taking vacation during that week, okay? 
So what's going to happen is, is with people taking vacation during that week, there's going to be a lot of schedules that are going to be totally erratic. And what happens is many times, well, it's a busted play week. Oh, the phone rings. Okay, I'll answer it. I'll answer it. I'm amazed, and I'll use myself as an example, and probably think about yourself. You can be very busy working, and your phone rings, and you look over, and you don't recognize the number, so you don't answer it. I do that all the time. But there can be other times when it's a little more, you're caught up, a little more laid back, a little more, you know, you're getting kind of winding down, the phone rings, and okay, go ahead and answer it. You see, so don't, don't hesitate. Right now, this is why I say the summer months is an ideal time to be prospecting people who you haven't been able to get a hold of. It, 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 it is only, um, the only time better is the end of the year. It, it is that time between Thanksgiving and New Year's when there's an incredible number of holidays and holiday vacations and everything else in there. But yeah, so don't give up but use the questions, but don't try to close, just engage. Now, you're gonna use your questions to engage, but then you wanna eventually close with just one thing. And I wanna close here in just a couple minutes by focusing on this one thing. What do I mean this? I want your business to be so, whatever you sell to be so simple that it's easy for the customer to do business with you. Now, some of you are saying, Mark, we have to have our customers fill out a credit, do a credit report, and do all that kind of stuff before we'll do business with them. That is a closing sign. That's a closing sign. And you say, Mark, sometimes I like to use that as a pre-close. Yes, I agree on that. But here's the whole thing. If I pop that out on the table too soon, I can shut the customer down. So I've got to go from that credit form or whatever it might be right into the close. I, I, I'm really kind of keeping those very, very tight, very, very tight. I'm not going to have them do the credit form or any of those other pre-forms, we'll say, until I'm ready to close. Because I'm going to go from one right to the other. Because if, if, if I do that too early in the engaging process, see, what, what have I done? I, I have closed. And I may shut them down. And what happens is then I shut them down completely. For a high-value prospect, I may have lost myself. Now you say, Mark, does that run counter to this whole idea of trying to trying to close quickly? Yeah, I, I want to close quickly, but I got to close smart. I got to close smart. Sometimes the fastest way you close is by slowing down a little more because it's all in a methodical process. But again, if I've got a narrow funnel, I've got the time with which to do that. Yeah. Hey, what we've been talking about here today is, is really about how do we prospect and how do we engage and how do we move from prospect to customer? And here's the two big takeaways I want you to remember, okay? I want you to remember that it's all about engaging, not closing. We got a question that just came in. What's your advice on getting a prospect that has gone dark to re-engage? Really, it's, it's to be hitting them with these questions. Send them a media link, send, send them whatever, send, and use multiple tools. Don't hesitate if a prospect has gone dark, if you know what their, what their cell number is, to go ahead and send them a text message. You have nothing to lose, right? You have nothing to lose, right? So go ahead and send, you know, people, well, gee, I don't want to send them, a, send them a text message. But I, I'm going to use the exact same techniques that I'm using. And, and, and the number one I love is by taking a media link of some news. And wow, that's a great link. That's a great article. And I come up with a question and I pop that to them. That's the best way. Because all I'm doing is I'm trying to get dialogue going. Now, for me, what now what media links do you suggest? Use media links in the industry that you're selling into. Okay. Regardless, regardless of the industry, I was just on the phone this morning, and I, I and it was amazing. But I, I I was recapping for somebody all the different industries that I've done work for over the last 10, 10 years, and and it was mind blowing. And you know what's funny is each one of those industries has got a website. Each one of those industries has got has got a, yeah. So you just go out to whatever the industry's association is, and you can find an article that's really current that that is relevant and you pop that over to them. It's a powerful technique, but here's what you're doing. What you're doing is you're engaging the customer in what they perceive to be a safe way, because you're sharing with them information. 
Yeah. Here's the other key piece. Qualify fast. I want you to qualify fast. So you take those prospects that are not going to be, oh, that are not prospects. They're just suspects. And you get them over to your marketing list. You get them someplace else. So you focus strictly on where you're at. Hey, my name is Mark Hunter. That's my phone number there. Feel free to call me. Feel free. The book is High Profit Prospecting. It's page after page. And, and, and I encourage you to jump out to the website. And I also encourage you to check out infofree.com. The, these guys are absolutely terrific. The database is, is phenomenal. Now, it's U.S.-based. But if you're looking for phone numbers and, and um, the ability to segment. And again, I'm finding a tremendous amount of resurgence back onto the telephone. Tremendous amount of resurgence. Really is people. I, I just saw an article this morning from a very esteemed peer who I, I've known for years and very much respected. And he wrote in his article, he said, Hey, he's seeing a real resurgence in the telephone coming back as a selling tool. Yeah, I've said that all along. I've said that the telephone never died, people just forgot how to use it. It's all right there for you. Hey, my name's Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. Let me pop that, that website back up there for you. But that's my email. That's the uh, phone number. And of course, you know, saleshunter, the saleshunter.com. Let's get connected. Happy to help you out. Great selling.